Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Adventures of Wild Bill Hickok. Original air dates February 15th, 1952, and the title is The Mysterious Bell Ringer. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, present Wild Bill Hickok! Hi, you folks, hold on to your hats and gallop along with Guy Madison as Wild Bill Hickok and his pal Jingles, which is me, Andy Devine. We got another rootin' tootin' Wild Bill Hickok adventure story for you from the world's only talking cereal, Snap, Crackle, and Pop, Kellogg's Rice Krispies! Today, Kellogg's Rice Krispies brings you Wild Bill Hickok, transcribed in Hollywood and starring Guy Madison as Wild Bill and Andy Devine as his pal Jingles. In just 30 seconds, you'll hear the exciting story, The Mysterious Bell Ringer. When the weather's crisp, have yourself a Kellogg's Rice Krispie breakfast. Tomorrow morning, for instance, have yourself a big bowl of them. Oh, they're fun to eat. When you pour the milk or cream on them, listen, you'll hear them go snap, crackle, pop. Yes, sir, because Rice Krispies are the only talking cereal. The only talking cereal in the whole world. They talk right up and tell you how fresh and crisp they are. You'll love them. The fabulous reputation of United States Marshal Wild Bill Hickok spread like a prairie fire across the plains of the Old West. And from ranch and farm and cow town came calls for his help against the outlaw. One such call led Wild Bill and Jingles, his loyal deputy, headlong into an adventurous search for the mysterious bell ringer. Well, sure, Mr. Hickok, I can tell you and Jingles how to get to our Mackey sheep ranch, but I wouldn't go there if I was you. But he sent for us, Mr. Shane. Hold it, Jingles. You got a reason for that advice, Shane? Sure he's got a reason, Hickok. Ira Mackey's a low-down sheep herder just like that Nate Boggs. They ought to be run out of the country. Doggone it, I've had enough of your lip, Mr. Matson. You may be one of the biggest cattlemen in this section, but if you Jingles, don't... Jingles, hold it a minute. No, oh, all right. I'll just sit down here where I can kick him in the shin. Oh, not in that chair, you big old... Oh, oh. Now, Dag Nabbit, mm. look at what you've done, Jingles. Broke my best chair. And I've brung that one out in the covered wagon myself. <clears throat> well, I wish you'd have left it where you come from. Too weak to stand this rugged life in the West anyway. He didn't bring it out expecting elephants to set in it. Now that does That's it. enough, Jingles. Tell me, Shane. Are you advising me not to go out to Ira Mackey's just because he's a sheep man? Well, Marshal Hickok, there's, this here's cow country. Sheep men like Ira Mackey and Nate Boggs, they don't stand too well socially, so to speak. I wouldn't want no truck with them if I was you. Well, I'll be a salty seahorse. Now, if that ain't a fine way for a gent to talk when he's wearing a town marshal star and pretending to stand for law and order. That's what Tom Shane's smart. He knows which side of the hide's got the hair on it. The way I see it, the law is for everybody, and I represent the United States government. Uh, me too. 
And if I find that any harm's come to Aramakis since he wrote me about losing sheep to rustlers, I'm just liable to come looking for a few cattlemen. Well, all right. If you two are set on going out there to Mackey's place, you'd better wear a red hat with a sign on it saying who you are. A red hat with a sign? Now, what did that be for? When you're on sheep herders' range around here, you got to be careful. Some cattlemen ain't so easy going and even-tempered as I am. <laughs> You're plumb liable to come up sudden with a load of lead, just by accident. Bill, I got it all figured out. You've got all of what figured out, Jingles? Well, Harry Mackey wrote you a letter saying he was losing his sheep in some mysterious fashion. That's right. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, Baldy Matson and those other cattlemen are guilty, that's all. You think so, sure enough, huh? Why, sure. Now, now look down there. What's that? That's a creek with water in it. That's it, water. Cattle need water, and so does sheep. Sheep drink in the water, cattle won't. So it's the cattlemen, and Baldy Matson's the ringleader. They've been rustling Ira's sheep. Well, let's don't tell anybody till we get some proof. All right. We won't let them know I figured it out all so easy, huh? Not till we talk to Ira and get some more facts. This must be his place. There's a big flock of sheep. Well, then let's turn in here and stop under that tree. Stop? Sure. Whoa, Joker. Whoa, Whoa. Whoa. Hey, Jingles, what are we stopping for? Well, it's noon and the sun's high and I'm hungry. <clears throat> Good big oak tree for shade and a siesta. Any more reasons? Sure. I got some canned tomatoes and some canned peaches and some hard tack. And if I'm going to get tangled up in a cattle and sheep man's war, I got to have my strength. <laughs> Sometimes you get right convincing, partner. <laughs> yeah, I do, don't I? Here, now, hold your tin cup and I'll give you half of these tomatoes. Mm, thanks. There you are. Here's some hard tack. Hey, Bill. Bill, look at that goat with a bell around its neck. Yeah, the sheep are all following him around. Oh, now, ain't that just cuter than a kid's picnic? Hmm. What's he's, that goat after? He's chewing on that tomato can you threw over there. Well, he's got a strong constitution, ain't he? Here, little goat, come on now. Here, goaty, here, goaty. Cattlemen, they're after us. Here, here they come. Hold your fire, Jingles. It might be Ira Mackey making a mistake. All right, boys, we give plenty of warning before, and I will get them down. Cut loose! Bill, behind you! This is Charlie Lyon, friends, and here's Slim again. Slim, the singing cowboy. Howdy, folks, howdy. A snap, crackle, pop, hello to (laughs) y'all. Now, what do you mean, a snap, crackle, pop, hello? Why, Charlie, that's the Rice Krispies howdy-do. The friendliest greeting there is. Don't you know how nice it is to meet up with a big bowl of those crisp, fresh Kellogg's Rice Krispies the first thing in the morning? Oh, sure. Well, Rice Krispies are the talking cereal, you know. And when you pour the milk on them, they tell you how good and how crisp they are. Why, they greet you with a cheerful snap, a crackle, and a pop. Why, it makes you feel happy even before you start to eat them. And once you taste them, mmm. Oh, sing it, Slim. Don't just say it, sing it. <laughs> Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best. And how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. You'll enjoy them especially with fruit or berries on top. Fresh, canned, or frozen berries or fruit go wonderfully with those deliciously fresh Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Get several packages at your grocery store soon. Now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. Before Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles even had a chance to talk to the man who'd sent for them, they were gun belt deep in mystery. They'd been warned by the town marshal, Tom Shane, threatened by the cattleman, Baldy Matson, and then, when they were about to take a siesta, a group of strange riders stormed up and started shooting. Well, gents, that's what I call a ride fancy welcome. Did you plan it, or does it just come natural to you? Where'd those guns come from? (laughs) Mister, you ain't the first one to ask that question. Who are you? What are you doing on my property? 
It seems to me you might have found that out before you started exercising your artillery, mister. Yeah, you know, it's a lucky thing you ain't corners bait right now with that short fuse temper you're packing. I said, who are you? Wild Bill Hickok, that's who he is. Does that make things clear, huh? Hickok. <laughs> now let's find out who you are, mister. I figured we were on Ira Mackey's property. That your name? Well, no, no, Mr. Hickok. <laughs> I reckon we've had mistakes all around. I'm Nate Boggs. This is my sheep range. Mackey's line starts top of the hill yonder about two miles. That clears up all but the shooting. Yeah. Say, does there just happen to be a little teensy-weensy cattle and sheepman's war going on in these parts? No. Oh. But we're ready for them if they want to start something. Sorry I mistook you for some of them, Marshal, but I... Just don't like to have strangers dawdling on my land. Well, for me, I can't get off of it fast enough. Yeah, partner. Well, forget that siesta today. Let's go. Come here, Buckshot. Ooh. Oh, steady, Joker. By the way, mister, that's a right fine goat you got there. What about it? You got him trained real good for leading sheep. What do you mean by that, Marshal? Just looks like he keeps your flock together in a bunch. Saves you a lot of trouble. Sure. Sure does. Well... No hard feelings, Mr. Hickok. Nope. But if I were you, I'd be a little more careful about shooting and asking questions. The questions come first, generally. Come on, Jingles. Hi, Buckshot. Hi, Buckshot. Well, there's an adobe house, Bill. Reckon that's Mackey's. Must be. Smoke coming out of the chimney. Maybe he's home. Well, I sure hope so. We've been having a hard enough time looking for Doggone it, Bill. Has the whole country gone local? You'd think we were back in Kentucky with a feud going full blast. Touch you out here, all right. Hold oh, there in the house. Hold your fire. Yeah, you sad salamander. Put that long tom down before I come up and wrap it around your neck. Stay where you are. Got a bead on the left eye of the fat one. One move and he's dead. Huh? Bill, he means me. He's got a bead on the left eye. What'll I do? Close it. Oh, <laughs> hadn't thought of that. That'll fool him. Hey, 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 where'd you go? Oh, yeah, well, do you no good to close it, Lumpy. Lumpy? Now I ain't gonna stand for that from you. I'm coming up there and... Oh, oh Bill! Billy hit me in that eye. I'm blind. Oh. Take it easy, Jingles. Easy nothing, Bill. I'm blind in that eye. He shot me. Jingles, you've still got your eye closed. Huh? Open your left eye. Oh. <laughs> Woo-wee, I sure thought he got me that time. Take a look at your hat. My hat? Why, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Why, you half-baked churnhead, you shot a hole plump through my hat. Serves you right for closing your eye. Hey, are you Ira Mackey? That's what my mammy called me, and reckon so. Well, I'm Hickok. You wrote me a letter. Wild Bill Hickok? Yes, Wild Bill Hickok, you shriveled up old Gila monster. Now put down that smoking lead pusher and let us come in. Oh, come on, come on running. I've got business with you. Yes, it's safe now, partner. Let's go. Hi, Buckshot. Hi, Buckshot. Uh, Jeff, Joker, I want to get inside a house for a change. Oh, Get out of them saddles and come on in, gents. <laughs> Howdy, Mr. Mackey. You know, we've had quite a time. You even get close enough to shake your hand. Oh, is that so? Well, here it is, empty and waiting. <laughs> I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Hickok. And this is my partner and deputy, Jingles. I ain't so sure I want to shake his hand, Bill. Now, don't you go getting cantankerous with me, Lumpy. Oh. Or I'm liable to start whittling it down to my size. Looks like you better make friends, Jingles. That's a big threat. Well, but no more shooting. Yeah, I right. shake, Lumpy. Now, let's get this straight. My name is Jingles. J-I-N-G-L-E-S. Jingles. Oh, all right, Lumpy. Just sit down oh. there. On the porch, the chair's weak. <laughs> Now, what's all this about your sheep disappearing, Ira? Well, that's it, Mr. Hickok. Uh, oh, no, wait a minute. We already shook hands, ain't we? That's right. Well, then I'll call you Bill. Now, like I said, in my letter, I've been losing sheep right along. I don't know how. It's a mystery. The flock gets smaller by the day. Anywhere from five to twenty head. I know. I count them. You ever hear sheep rustlers before, Bill? Well, most of the trouble we've had before was with killing the sheep, either with guns or poison. Well, that's a cattleman's trick. Had a lot of that. 
Up to a short while ago, tempers is still running a little high hereabouts, but this ain't killing. The sheep are gone. They're vanished as clean as a hound dog eating a pork chop. Pork chop? Uh, Bill... Not now, Jingles. Go on, Ira. Well, oh. I've rid over every inch of my land. I can't find any sign of no horses except my own. And no boots except knees. I'll die in. Well, why don't we go out and ride your range with you now? Might scare up something you missed. Well, that's fine with me. Come on, let's go. Come on, Jingles. No, all right. Suppose you figured we haven't been shot at enough today. Wish I was a goat. I'd just stand around all day and do nothing but eat old tin can. <laughs> Hey, now, you see, Hickok, even you couldn't find no more sign of them rustlers in the spook leaves and hot and worked out mine. Whoa, Buckshot, whoa, boy. Whoa, Joker, whoa. Well, what are you stopping here for, Bill? It ain't long till dark. We're going to be getting back. We will. Look, Ira, you've been losing sheep a few at a time. Yeah, that's right. Sir. If somebody drove those sheep off, they'd leave tracks. And if it was coyotes or wolves, they'd leave the carcasses. That sounds logical. But if somebody led the sheep walking in front of them, the sheep would blot out any sign. Mm, I hadn't thought of that. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Bill. I think I see something. What is it, partner? Hey, get around here, Joker. Whoop. Ooh, now steady. It's right over here. Yeah, yeah, Bill, here's something mighty strange to find on a sheep ranch. Hey, well, what is it? Cow tracks leading into the brush. <laughs> And yonder's the cow. If you're interested, I ain't. Well, what's a cow doing on your ranch? It ain't stealing sheep, and that's for sure. Let's take a look at that cow. Hey, Bill, here comes somebody. It's Baldy Matson. Boy, boy. Hey, what are you doing with my cows, you mangy sheep herder? What's he doing in my range? Just an excuse to give you a chance to run off my sheep, Matson. You calling me a sheep stealer? Well, you ain't calling nobody else. Bill, he's no. going well, sure would be nice if folks could stand around and talk peaceable and instead of always shouting at each other through a cloud of gun smoke. Pick up his gun, Jingles. <laughs> what are you messing in this for, Hickok? Somebody's been stealing Irish sheep. I'm trying to find out who it is, Matson. Well, it ain't me. I ain't so sure about that. How'd this longhorn of yours get over here? It's got legs, ain't it? Well, you'd better put a bell around its neck and keep it home from now on. Somebody's apt to get the wrong idea. Not a bad idea, partner. Might put a bell on Matson too, Bill, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, mister. You drive that maverick home and stay off Ira's range till I run down these sheep wrestlers. You're sure driving nails in your coffin, Hickok. Give him his gun, Jingles. No, oh, Bill. Give that to him. Oh. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> the cattleman ain't gonna take this line down, Hickok. I got a feeling that before long we're going to have a new U.S. Marshal room in this section. One that ain't bedding down with a bunch of mutton punches. Up, boy! Get for home, you longhorn, Maverick! Get out! Come and get it, you bodies. Come on, you bronc busting rattlers. Skedaddle over here. Gee whiz, the sun's been up a half an hour in the grub ready. Parade over and grab it, and let's hear you sing, too. Cause it's Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Let's march right up to the table now. Rice Krispies taste the best, and how? Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Rice Krispies mean more fun and pep, so come on, gang, let's get in step. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Add milk or cream, that's all you do, then listen to them talk to you. Snap, crackle, pop. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Yes, sirree, partner, they're mighty fine eating those Kellogg's Rice Krispies. You better make sure you got plenty on hand for your breakfast. Now ask Mom if she won't round up a supply of Rice Krispies for you the next time she goes to the store. She will, I bet you. Well, sir, now let's get back to Wild Bill Hickok. <laughs> After tangling with Baldy Matson, Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles, leaving Ira at home, decided to make another call on Ira's other neighbor, Nate Boggs. 
It was after dark when they rode up the road to Nate's ranch house. Bill, the house is all dark, not a light showing anywhere. What are you coming to ask Boggs anyway? I want to find out whether he's been losing any sheep like Ira has. Whoa, whoa. You figure maybe Baldy Matson's been stealing the sheep too, Bill? Matson was your idea, remember? Hold it, Jingle. What you got, Bill? Look over there. In the dark? I can't see nothing. There. Strike a match. All right. Why, Bill, that ain't nothing but a goat pen. Sure, a goat pen. And that's our answer. Come on. Bill, you gone loco or something? No, partner. But we've got to get back to our flock of sheep and fast. Steady, boy. Steady, oh, boy. Bill, I wish I knew what was sticking in your crop. You will before long, partner. Now it's time to ride. Hi, Buckshot. Dig in, boy. Hi, hi. Jeff, Joker, you heard what Bill said. Ha, 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 ha. There they are, Jingles. Yeah, Bill, but sound peaceful enough. Doesn't Ira have a sheep herder? That's the man I'm looking for, Jingles. Who but you who are? Ooh, ooh. Well, he ought to be around here someplace. Bill! What is it, partner? <laughs> Bill, my foot touched something that feels an awful lot like a dead man. Well, is it? Well, I'll strike a match and... No, Jingles. Not now. Okay, let me... T- yep. Is it, Bill? Yeah, you're right, partner. Is it Ira? No, Ira's got a beard. The trail's getting hotter. Uh, Bill, that bell. Yeah, that's what I've been wondering about. Sounds like a goat, Bill, that's all. Yeah, come on now and keep quiet. Well, what are you going to do? We've got to catch that goat. Take it easy now and don't let him get away. What do you want to do that for? Don't talk. Just grab it. Now! <laughs> I got him, Bill. Critter's hard to handle. Quick, take your handkerchief and tie it around his mouth. Yeah. I'll take his bell off. Well, all right, but I wish I knew what you were up to. No. Can you make a noise like a goat jingle? Me? What do you want me to go <clears throat> for? <laughs> well, when you got the real thing right. You want to catch those sheep rustlers? Sure, but... Then be a goat. Oh, something tells me I'm being the goat, all right. Here, I'll put this bell around your neck. Now, wait a minute, Bill. If you're going to try to feed me on tin cans next, you can just forget the whole thing. Quiet. Oh, now, come on. So walk east from here. You keep sounding like a goat and let that bell ring. Oh, all right. <laughs> but I don't like this. Are <laughs> we ready to grab them sheep and rush them out of here? Here comes the goat. Get set to grab them. All right. <laughs> Wouldn't Hickok be surprised if he knew how we pulled this little trick? <laughs> hey, hey, that goat sounds funny. Bill! It's Hickok! Shoot your jug! Hey, hey, I can't see him. Don't move, Boggs. I can see your outline against the sky. One move and you're a goner. Now drop those guns. All right, all right. Yeah, that's better. Now, gents, your sheep-stealing days are all over. You're headed for jail. Bill, how did you figure out it was Bob? It was a goat and his little bell, Jingle. It was the only way to get sheep to leave the flock and not have any tracks of the thieves showing. You're pretty smart, Hickok. I should have shot you that first minute I saw you on my ranch. You mean the sheep had followed that goat over to Boggs' ranch? Sure. <laughs> and Boggs had mixed Ira's stolen sheep with his own flock. It was the only way to hide them. Well, now that's a new one on me. All the time I thought it was the cattleman that was causing the trouble. Well, Boggs... You might have thought you was a real smart sheep rustler, but it took Wild Bill Hickok and Jingles to get your goat. (laughs) And now, here are the stars of Wild Bill Hickok, Guy Madison, and Andy Devine. That's our Wild Bill Hickok story for today, folks. Have a pleasant weekend, and we'll be back with you on Monday. You bet we will with a story of blazing guns and a charge on Devil's Mountain. Meanwhile, Andy and I hope you'll remember to get Kellogg's Rice Krispies. Right. It's the world's only talking cereal. You bet it is. Andy and I think Kellogg's Rice Krispies are great. So long. See you Monday. <laughs> Yeah.
Yes, sir. Kellogg's, the greatest name in cereals, has brought you another exciting story of Wild Bill Hickok, starring Guy Madison and Andy Devine in person. Today's cast included Ken Christie, Barney Phillips, Howard McNear, and Bill James. Our director is Paul Pierce. Music by Dick O'Rourke. This is a David Heyer production transcribed in Hollywood. Don't forget to listen Monday, same time, same station, when Wild Bill Hickok faces the dangers of a charge on Devil's Mountain. Now, this is Charlie Lyon, speaking for Kellogg's Rice Krispies, the world's only talking cereal. Kellogg's Corn Flakes, America's favorite ready-to-eat cereal. And Kellogg's Sugar Corn Pops, the cereal with the sweetening already on it. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day and thanks for listening.